Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. The staffing shortages have been rampant across the country for over a year now. Yeah, and that is no exception for seasonal work. In fact, it's even more of a struggle to find workers. Our Courtney Freeman explains what two problems businesses are having when it comes to hiring seasonal workers. 10,000 Villages is a 76-year-old fair trade company selling products from all over the world and donating the money to the artists who make the goods. It's important work, but it's become tough in this economy. We're here to help our artisans, but we also want to give our employees a livable wage. Vaughn Ballinger manages the 10,000 Villages store at The Pearl. She's aware of a national survey that recently revealed two things. Employers either can't find enough seasonal workers or they can't afford them. Ballinger says her shop falls into both categories. The San Antonio store is the most profitable in their company, so as soon as these holiday products hit the floor, they definitely need more staffing help. Inflation caused them to cut down on the number of seasonal workers they hired. Like everyone, our shipping costs have gone off the chart, so we watch our expenses as much as we can. But filling even those few positions was tough. Experts say that's because our economy is adding way more jobs than can be filled. Here in this region, which is a 13 county region that, that we support, we had about 50,000 jobs uh, year over year from like September of 2021 to 2022. Workforce Solutions CEO Adrian Lopez says that leaves job seekers with a lot of options. Do they want a temporary seasonal assignment or do they want to actually, um, you know, go to a full time job that actually probably pays benefit. Ballinger was lucky to find a few new hires to help them, but knows other stores may not be as fortunate. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. New at 6, supporting individual rights to health care. That's the name and the intent, apparently, of a resolution that Bear County Commissioner's Court passed today. That resolution in response to the recent Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade. Some highlights include affirming the rights to make a private reproductive decisions, asking law enforcement and university health, which is under county supervision, not to pursue a criminal investigation related to reproductive health care, like an abortion or miscarriage, while also still following federal laws. It also asks that law enforcement make abortion investigations their lowest priority. The resolution passed at Commissioner's Court 4 to 1, Precinct 3 Commissioner Marilyn Barnard voted against it. In Jordanton, police are searching for a man they say may be linked to an active animal cruelty case. This investigation began November 4th after 10 dogs were rescued from a property. That property surrounded by trash in the 1200 block of Terrell Avenue. Alicia Badera is in, in, in Jordanton and spoke to the chief of police there about where this investigation stands right now and why all that trash has yet to be cleared from the property. These 10 dogs are on the road to recovery. Their stay at the Atascosa County Animal Control Department was short after the rescue group, Four Little Paws out of Uvalde, volunteered to take the dogs. However, there are two other pieces pending in this animal cruelty case. We want somebody to be held accountable and we want to see a big improvement in the way that property looks. According to Jordanton Police Chief Eric Kaiser, police are familiar with the property. The police have been to that residence numerous times over the past few years for um, drug related uh, issues and stolen property issues. However, no one has lived here during the last six months as the homeowner is in jail on an unrelated charge. So we have a person of interest that we're tracking down who we believe may have been occasionally feeding dogs over there and or bringing dogs over there. Two weeks later and there's still piles of trash surrounding this property and there was a request for the Public Works Department submitted in order for this trash to be cleaned up. However, according to the chief of police, that's been delayed due to a shortage of roll off dumpsters. We expect by this weekend to have a a roll off dumpster over there so we can start removing all the debris that covers the property. A task the chief says will cost the city several thousand dollars. It's an eyesore and a health issue for neighbors in that area. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Embattled Councilman Clayton Perry says he will not be taking a paycheck while he is on his leave of absence. The councilman who already faces a misdemeanor charge and a hit and run crash and is being investigated for DWI as fellow council members for a sabbatical yesterday. In the meantime, council, council plans to appoint a temporary replacement. A city spokeswoman said both Perry and that replacement could be paid while Perry's away, but the councilman's chief of staff says Perry will work with HR to decline the portion of his nearly $46,000 salary while he's away. How long that will be is anyone's guess.
the longest period is up through the end of the term, but one of the, it also says that when he's ready to come back, he can just tell us he's ready to come back and he comes back. So really it's up to him. I mean, we, again, this is, as far as we know, it, it doesn't have a definitive time period that he gave us. The city taking applications for Perry's temporary replacement. We have more information on KSAT.com. It has been nearly three years since Savon Kyle was shot and killed on the north side and still no arrests in that case. Someone inside a car fired the fatal shots and now San Antonio police are hoping that someone else can help them identify who that person was. Here's the image from December 8th, 2019. The white car was the victim's car. The darker car is the one that investigators are interested in. Detectives say it pulled up next to Kyle's on the driver's side and started shooting. Kyle was hit and killed. His son was in that car too, but he was not hit or injured. If anyone has any information that could help police close this case, it could be worth a cash reward. Call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Is San Antonio firefighters looking for the cause of an early morning house fire that they say did thousands of dollars in damage to a family's home? Fire crews responding to the home along Spots Street, that's along Palo Alto Road, around 6.30 tonight. They say the fire was in a room attached, excuse me, it was 6.30 this morning, obviously. The fire was in a room attached to the back of the house. The room had a door that went outside, but no door actually going into the home itself. Fire officials made, say that made their job a little harder as they tried to put out the flames. They went into the main home to fight the fire there as it spread. No one was home at the time. We're told firefighters rescued a dog that was trapped inside. They gave the dog oxygen. Estimated damage to the home, $20,000. Let's take a unique look at traffic here this evening during the 6 o'clock commute. It's not ah. the best picture, but it's not a view we get too often. I-37 at the Alamo Dome Tower tonight. And from way up here, you can see the traffic is moving smoothly. No big problems to make you aware of. I didn't know we had a camera up there. News to me, too. Yeah. All kinds of news here. New at six, a local family knows what it means to move around, but not always from house to house. They were homeless, but now they are sharing a message to anyone else who knows that struggle. A message about the help that is ready and waiting right now in San Antonio. As Max Massey shows us, that's a big goal of Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. So I'm a recent graduate um, in September of the year 2022. Meet Charisma, a new high school graduate, thanks to the Homeless Response System like resources. Me and my sister and my mom, we moved around a lot. I, I remember going to at least six different grade schools, three different districts. With the holidays just around the corner, Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week is an effort to help families who are dealing with difficult circumstances around our city. See the faces of homelessness, see them as people, um, and reach out as humans to humans. Be kind during this holiday season um, and share what you have with others. Homelessness is a problem in San Antonio that the city and these agencies are working together to fix. There's actions on both ends of the homeless response system. So upstream, making sure we have prevention dollars, the city of San Antonio and others have prevention dollars to make sure people don't end up in shelters like Haven for Hope. And then on the other end, downstream, there's housing. Well, the Haven for Hope is one of the local organizations working to help people get off the streets, but it's not the only one. The thing unique about San Antonio is it is a collaborative effort. We still have work to do always um, because there are people who are living on the streets today, um, but we're actually you know, making a dent in that and we're working together to ensure that people have a place, a safe and warm place to stay. The homeless response system is working one day at a time to prevent and hopefully one day end homelessness. I say do it. I say don't be scared to ask questions. Questions is the best way to get you out of your of the situation wherever you're in, whether who if they don't have the next question, go on to someone who does and to just always have hope. Max Massey, Case Out 12 News. Well, first the weather, now the decor. It's beginning to look a lot like the holiday season in the Alamo City. The HEB Christmas tree now set up at Travis Park today. The nearly 50 foot Nordman fir tree will be decorated with more than 10,000 lights and colorful handmade ornaments in the coming days. But first, they got to get it in place. I took a few people. This year's annual tree lighting will be in person on Friday, November 25th. As always, via bus services will provide free rides to the event day of. Some things you can expect this year, free ice skating, Ooh. giveaways, letters to Santa, movie screenings, and more.
You put police in cool weather, they don't want You got me at handmade <laughs> ornaments, so ooh, it piqued my interest. Oh. I've been working hard on the <laughs> homemade thermometer ornaments. I, I'm wondering if there'll be any uh, handmade thermometer ornaments on the city tree. I could go just drop a few off and see, but I, the problem is that they have direct sunlight, and that's never a good thing with a thermometer. Mm. Okay. Yeah, these Maybe. are perfectly calibrated instruments. I know, exactly. These aren't things that you just, you know, put out in the right. sunlight. No, we don't take this lightly around here. <laughs> what a day today. <laughs> Felt like winter time. I mean, 56 the high, the average being 72. We were 16 degrees below average. Even this morning, 38 degrees. And don't expect a warm up anytime soon. Actually, reinforcing shot of cold air on the way. 50 degrees right now, dew point of 33. The wind has simmered down a bit. It'll be out of the north at about 5 to 10 overnight, but temperatures down in the low 40s at 10 o'clock, back into the upper 30s by tomorrow morning. So feeling the chill in the air. We'll talk about that reinforcing shot of cold air when it arrives, how much colder it's going to be, and even a few rain chances, along with a space station flyover within the hour. I'll have the updates coming right up. I've seen uh, weed eaters, uh, piece of lawn, uh, pieces of lawn mowers, um, rims, hubcaps, a bunch of different of everything. Okay, all of that everything is what's not supposed to go in your recycling or your organics bin. In a case that explains, we're going to talk about what actually gets recycled in San Antonio and why and what goes in that recycling and organics bin. It's one of our most watched explains ever, so we're bringing it back on this Texas Recycles Day that's coming up at 6.30. A new hurdle for a proposed Uvalde fundraiser just a week after victims' families pulled their support. The potential problem that could put the brakes on balling for Uvalde. The story and more tonight on the Night Beat at 10. Destiny Navida has always felt at home on stage. Yeah, she'd grown up with a Tejano family, a big time <laughs> Tejano family. Her father is the one and only Raulito who would dance and sing next to his brother, the late Tejano superstar, Emilio Nevada. Now the latest Destiny Nevada album, only her second one, is up for a Latin Grammy on Thursday in Las Vegas. Jesse DeGollado says that obviously, talent like hers runs in the family. The heartfelt emotion in Destiny Nevada's voice comes through in her songs. Being able to feel what I felt in that moment when I was writing it. I'm very proud of her. She's a big inspiration for me. At her side from the start, the music and voice of her younger brother, Rigo Nevada. We wanted to do this since we were kids. And so now that we're doing it, it's just a dream come true. Even more so now that Dime Como Se Siente, Tell Me How It Feels, is up for a Latin Grammy for Best Tejano Album. It was always kind of an expectation for me in the future. I didn't think that it would come as quickly as it did. And for their Remember. proud father. It's an awesome feeling, you know, a couple of kids from the South Side. They're doing what made their father and late uncle famous. It just feels so good that they're following what we love to do is music, you know, and they take it to heart. Although they've never recorded in the studio, this is where Emilio and Raulito recorded some of their biggest hits. <laughs> Destiny Navida says carrying on their legacy isn't a burden, it's her responsibility. I'm privileged to do so. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Liked it. All right. So the weather is very is cold. I, I was cold. wondering if it was unseasonably cold. Oh, yeah. Big time. I mean, our high temperature yeah. today was 16 degrees below average. Our morning low is 12 degrees below average. And guess what? We're not really going to warm up in the extended forecast. I mean, we're talking just a few degrees and then we see a reinforcing shot of cool air drop temperatures again for Saturday. So we'll dive into those details in a moment. First of all, I wanna to get to this space station flyover. I know many of us enjoy seeing that bright dot in the sky shoot across when we can actually see the International Space Station at 6.35 p.m. It's only gonna last five minutes, max height, only 51 degrees, so this one is not going to be directly overhead. It's going to appear out of the south-southwest and disappear 
over the east northeast. So 635 PM look to the south southwest and then hopefully you'll be able to catch the uh, catch a glimpse of the space station flying over and here's a look at the cloud cover right now. I know we had the thin cloud streaming overhead throughout the day. We still have some of that, especially closer to the Rio Grande and west of I 35 and in the hill country. I think your view will be obscured. Uh, by the cloud cover and some of those high clouds, but locally in southeast of town, I think the visibility will be just fine for the space station flyover. 6.35 p.m. this evening. All right, here's the big picture. And we've had this stream of Pacific moisture aloft coming in. That's what gave us our clouds today. So we had that filtered sunshine off and on throughout the day. Not the kind of cloud cover that produces any precipitation. Uh -uh, all that is off in the basically the Midwest, especially the Great Lakes. Northeast, the East Coast. This is the same system that gave us a little bit of moisture yesterday. Now it's dropping snow throughout the Great Lakes and even into parts of New England. That's all moving away from us. And we do have another disturbance off to the West. It's over Southern California right now. That's going to slide overhead on Thursday. I think just increase our cloud cover and maybe help drop a few sprinkles. That would be it. We're not looking at anything major in terms of rain chances. 0% tomorrow at 10% chance on Thursday, then up to 30% on Saturday, and that's our maximum of the foreseeable future. There are some indications that around or a little before Thanksgiving, we could have better chances of rain, but really through the next seven days, best chance 30% Saturday. So a little bit of light shower activity and then 20% chances Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, but very light in nature. We talked about this a bit yesterday because of the 17 hundredths of an inch now we got officially at the airport yesterday that moved this year 2022 into the second driest year to date on record. However, 1917 had a really good day on November 17th. So come Thursday, we'll be back at the driest year to date on record. Unfortunately, all right, let's talk temperatures right now. 40s and 50s, 45 in Kerrville, 52 Pleasanton, 48 Gonzales, 50 in Carrizo Springs, 48 Holotus Bulverde at 47 degrees. Feeling the chill out there and we're already below our average low temperature for the day and the temperatures will just continue to drop overnight. So tomorrow morning, this is what the map should look like. Rio Medina 36, New Braunfels 39, Comfort 34, around most of San Antonio, about 38, 39 degrees. And then by the afternoon, we only make it to 55 for the high temperature. So chill in the air in the morning, and we're not going to rebound a whole lot into the afternoon. Partly cloudy conditions, north wind at about 10 to 15, about 59 in Divine, 57 Pleasanton in Floresville. But overall, mid 50s for high temperatures tomorrow will warm just a couple of degrees. We're talking 58 Thursday and Friday, so you won't even notice it really. And then look what happened Saturday. Reinforcing shot of cool air Saturday. We're talking a high temperature of only 48 degrees. Remember, the average high is 72. There's that cool air staying in place. Uh, the warmest, about 58 degrees. That'll be Thursday and Friday. How's that for a uh, November forecast? Yeah. yeah. Feels like January. Wow. Thank you, Adam. Mm -hmm. All right, I have a weather question for Greg. Yeah. Ooh. When a team that plays in the Dome goes out on the road and has to play in rain, cold. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be cold too, right? Yeah. Is that a concern? I, 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 I said team. That would be a question you would put to Frank Harris, the quarterback yeah. for the UTSA Roadrunners, who only need one more win to secure that home field advantage for the Conference USA Championship. We'll put that question to him. And the celebration continues tonight for San Antonio FC. Coming up. Oh. UTSA Roadrunners are the nearly two touchdown favors, and they travel to Houston this Saturday to take on the Rice Owls. That's after they crushed Louisiana Tech 51 7 by forcing five turnovers, and now just need one more win to host their second straight Conference USA Championship game in the Alamo Dome. Rice comes into this game with a record of 5 and 5, 3 and 3 in conference play, and coming off a loss to Western Kentucky 45 to 10, but that was on the road. Rice is 4 1 at home, and now weather could be a factor with rain in the forecast for Saturday. Does that change quarterback Frank Harris's preparations? Nah, you got you know you got to control what you can't control. We know we can't control the weather. Um, just gonna go out there and see what the weather's like. Um, so you know the elements today was cold, windy, stuff like that. So just preparing for Saturday, whether it's cold, windy, or rain, we gotta go out there and execute and play football like we know how to. All right, kickoff in Houston on Saturday will be at noon.
Texas Law and Lawrence will be looking for only their second road win of the season when they travel to Kansas to take on the Jayhawks and Lawrence. The Longhorns will be nine point favorites, even though they're just one and two on the road and the Jayhawks are four and one at home. But the Jayhawks have the 15th worst defense, giving up a total of 442 yards per game with disappointing losses to both Texas Tech, though, and Oklahoma State on the road. Is Steve Sarkeesian happy with at least his six and four record through 10 games this season after what happened last year against Kansas, where they lost at home in overtime 57 to 56 to drop to four and six. I think about where we were this time last year, um, which was a tough spot to be in, you know, and so um, I feel like we've made progress. Um, would I like to have a better record than six and four right now? For sure. Um, but the idea of the way that we've lost a couple of the games and where we're at and still where we're at in conference standings, uh, I think there's still a lot of belief in what we're doing. Uh, I still think there's a lot of hope in what this season can be. Um, but again, we can't, we can't think all big picture right now. We've got to make sure that we're drilled down and, and zeroed in on the target, and that's playing really good on Saturday. All right, kickoff in Lawrence on Saturday will be at 2.30. One of the other big games in a big game playoff coverage on Friday night will be the New Braunfels Unicorns going up against powerhouse Austin Westlake in San Marcos. The Unicorns are coming off their hard-fought 17-13 victory over against Reagan in the Class 6A by district playoffs. In not ideal weather conditions carried live here on KSAT 12 and also without their star quarterback Leighton Adams who was seriously injured in a fall off a utility pole the night before. Now the Unicorns who are 8-3 have to go up against Austin Westlake who is undefeated this season 11-0 and coming off their first round playoff victory against Cedar Ridge 58-10. They've got a great offense. They're, they've got a really good star players. Um, but at the same time, we've got star players, and we've, uh, we're going to go out there and execute the best we can, and as I'm sure they're trying to as well. I know our seniors are loving it. I'm loving it. And we just want to keep on going. And we, if we want to be the best, we've got to beat the best. All right, the Class 6A area playoffs between New Braunfels and Westlake kicks off 7.30 p.m. at Rattler Stadium in San Marcos. San Antonio FC continues to celebrate their first ever United Soccer League championship. They won Sunday night when they defeated Louisville FC 3-1. The championship celebration continues today with, of course, a river victory parade, just like the Spurs did, remember, in their five championships, culminating with a stop right there live at Arneson River Theater to share it with their fans, and no one deserves it more than San Antonio FC. What a turnout. And remember, they're getting to do this with all the Christmas lights oh. on the river walk. That's got to be pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Thank you, Greg. You got it. <laughs> all right, coming up next, what actually gets recycled and why? KSAT explains what's in the bin is next. <laughs>